Ist das, ist das Casey Neister? Uh, uh, if it is, then he is on a boosted board. Actually, I'm not sure whether that was Casey Neistat or not. Uh, I didn't manage to get closer to the guy. Uh, but this story is not about him. This story is about a story that I heard like 20 or 30 years ago. I can't remember how long ago. And it's somehow also strange how some stories you remember, they stick in your brain and sometimes you recall them again and I want to share this today with you. So this story takes place uh, at a university in Denmark and basically there is a physics exam. And actually I think I need some props for this. Okay, this should work. I can work with this one. So, as mentioned, this um, story takes place uh, in Denmark, actually at the University of Copenhagen. And there is a physics exam. And the question there is, describe how you would use a barometer to measure the height of a skyscraper. This is my skyscraper. And here I have a cutout barometer. A barometer probably nowadays is barely used, but it's used to be used to measure air pressure. Basically changes in weather, so highs and low pressure areas. The question was, describe how you would use a barometer to measure the height of the skyscraper. And the student, his response was, I would take a piece of string, attach it to the barometer, attach it to the barometer, go up the skyscraper, hang it down the building, and the length of the string plus the height or the length of the barometer would be the height of the skyscraper. The physics pro professor didn't really like this response. He was pretty upset about it and angry and failed the student. The student, on the other hand, sort of said, well, there's nothing wrong with this reply, it's correct, and disputed his failure of the exam. So um, an arbiter had to be called in. The arbiter basically judged that indeed the answer was uh, correct but didn't display any noticeable knowledge of physics. To resolve the problem, it was decided to call the student back in and allow him six minutes in which he could prove uh, a verbal answer which showed some elements or minimum elements of basic principles of physics. For five minutes, the student sat silent, frowning his forehead in thoughts until the arbiter reminded the student that he didn't have much time left, that he needed to come up with an answer. The student replied that he had several extremely relevant answers, but couldn't make up his mind which one to use. On being advised to hurry up, the student replied with the following. First, you could take up the barometer up to the rooftop of the skyscraper and throw it down to the ground and measure it the time that it takes for the barometer to fall from the top of the skyscraper to the bottom. And basically with the formula H equals half of G multiplied by time squared, you can then calculate the height of the tower. The problem is that you need to be really accurate with the time, which is difficult, and the barometer would break afterwards. So not great for the barometer. That was answer one. Answer two, if, it's, uh, if the sun is shining like it is here, 
you measure the height of the barometer, you measure the length of the shade, you measure the length of the skyscraper, and then it's pure uh, arithmetics, proportional arithmetics to calculate the height of the skyscraper. So that was his second answer. At the, as a third option, the student provided as a solution to put the uh, parameter on a string and use it as a pendular at the bottom of the skyscraper and then do the same at the top of the skyscraper. And the height is worked out by the difference in gravitational restoring force, which is T equals two pi square root. Another, another option that the student provided was if there's an outside emergency staircase, it would be easy to walk up the staircase and mark off the length of the skyscraper in barometer length. So you would walk up the staircase and if you know the length or the height of the barometer, you could determine the height of the skyscraper. And the student went on and said, if you want a merely boring autotox approach, you could also use the barometer and measure the air pressure at the bottom of the skyscraper and at the top of the skyscraper and convert the difference in millibar into feet or meter and give the height of the building. He went on further and said, but as we're being encouraged to think out of the box and be come up with original solutions, his preferred answer would be to take the barometer and go to the maintenance manager of the building and offer him the barometer as a gift in return for uh, telling him what the height of the building is. It turns out that the student was Niels Bohr, a future physics Nobel Prize winner. Actually, his son went on to win also the uh, physics Nobel Prize. So I guess the lesson here is that sometimes we get caught up what the answer should be and we sort of forget all the options that we have and look for new solutions. And for me personally, and, and obviously this can be applied in different ways, but for me this is true in the renewable and sustainable space. We are so used to using fossil fuels and um, it's, it's difficult to make that mind change uh, to switch to alternative uh, solutions and consider them as an option or believe that they would work. I remember that when Tesla started no one thought that they would be a success and look at them where, where they are now they are the, by far the most valuable uh, car manufacturer and I believe that's the same that will happen with the energy sector. Still, the majority of the energy is being produced by fossil fuels, but I believe within the next 10 years, there will be a massive switch. And I think the early adopters, and that's customers and also suppliers, utilities will be the winners the ones that switch quicker to renewable and sustainable energies will win this uh, change of the industry this week next era energy became more valuable than exxon if you want to know more about the story the story was first featured in reach's digest in 1958 and i've added more information about this story that I just told you in the description below. Apart from the lessons that you can take away from this story, I have a lesson learned from making this video. It's early in the morning now in the UAE, it's still before nine o'clock, but it's still way too hot to make these videos sitting in the sun. My camera overheated twice in the process of making this video. So the next time either I need to wait until it's cooler or do it uh, in a more shaded environment. Bye.